Hello, everyone. My name is Brett McCrory. I'm a full time building and carpentry teacher at Te Filawara Institute. Thanks for having me. Uh, I was fortunate enough for you Moodle buffs to allow me to speak last year at Moot 15 in Melbourne. And now I've been lucky enough to get another start. If you did not see my presentation last year, it was about a different approach to teaching our future builders, hence the term next stage. Future builders, the journey continues. I've got five key points I wanted to raise, and they'll be brief because we've only got a short time. Uh, institute changes, changes as a student and a teacher, our Moodle advances within the Cert 4 that we're doing, and the statistics. But firstly, I'd like to remind everyone of how I was a happy little building technological teaching buff with a big happy face last year. Does anyone remember this picture? With the POV goggles, and I was embracing technology. So that was me at the start of last year, eager with a big smile. So what's happened since, can anyone guess? Anyone? Oh my God. It's an online overload. It's endless. Lapels, headsets, audio panels, speakers, apps, software, software apps. There is so much to take in. I sometimes just, as a carpenter builder, I just have to stop and just pull back and just walk away. But it's okay. I have my legendary offsider, Glenn the Saviour. But what's happened to Glenn? Is it my influence or is it Glenn's multitasking skills? But either way, as builders, we can both say we've embraced technology. And I have a confession. Only eight years ago, I learned how to attach a file. OK? So let's recap. This is our Moodle site. Students are studying Certificate 4 in Building Studies. And it pretty much, the course assists with students obtaining a builder's licence. We have kept the structure the same. One, one year, three nights a week, one cluster or one subject at a time. We teach Mondays and Thursdays are optional, so they can be blended or face-to-face. -face. They can come in, stay at home, and Tuesdays are solely online. So the Institute changes since last year. With using, oh, sorry, we've grown, right? So we used to have about 46 at Wollongong, 40, 40 to 50. So we've grown, we've done it the institute wide. So we've allowed extra teacher support and we've increased the numbers. So we've got 21 students at Nara, we've got six at Goulburn, five at Maria, five at Cooma, and we've got one on his own at Jindabyne. Now with using Moodle and Adobe Connect, we've been able to expand locations we could not before. So the flexibility of Moodle and teaching online, we can include five students in one area where normally you would have to have 20 to start a class. So we can allow extra teacher support within those areas. And we've increased the numbers from 50 to, I think it's 84. I wrote down 85 here, but I think the maths, if you add up, it's going to be 84. And we're also learning from any location now. So what do I mean by that? We've got the chilled out boys at now. We've got the homies at Maria. We've got the head down, bums up boys at Goulburn. We've got the hashtag we love learning pods boys from Cooma. Now, I'm not a Twitter man, but I love to say the term hashtag, so I've just thrown that in there. <laughs> but in saying that, the facilities allow the boys to come in. They're, they're really good facilities at Cooma. They have a, a swipe card. They come in, and then they just turn on the equipment, the comms box, and they go for it. Now, a, lot of them, a couple of them are football players, and they're going to have a talk in a moment, and they, uh, they just do it at any time that they can, so it really works for them. We also have uh, Jindy Josh. He goes to the TAFE Annex on his own. And he's actually a really good student. We also have uh, Josh is one of my students from Wollongong, and he was away for two weeks, and... It was 7.30 at night, but he's going, oh, it's 9.30. I'm going, where are you, dude? He's going, oh, I'm in New Zealand. Went, oh, wow, that's great. So get a photo, even though it doesn't look like he's in New Zealand. It could be anywhere, but it was, it was in New Zealand. We've got Ben, who uh, went away camping up north, and uh, he was on his phone using Adobe Connect and Moodle. We've also got Scotty from Berry. So Scotty's 10 minutes away from now, but he couldn't be bothered going in, and he, he's actually <laughs> pretending as if he's typing fast. He's like a two-finger bandit. 
Mm. And I've got Ben who actually lives in Wollongong. He's a two-minute drive. He can't come in because of his family commitments and hopefully he doesn't do his studies like that, but he's got that photo for me. And he actually goes and watches the recorded sessions. Then we've also got students that have been, that have been away and they've uh, done their studies sitting at Uluru. A couple of guys tried barley, but the internet kept cutting out. Port Stephens, some guys on holidays. Moss Vale, I've got a couple of, I've got some brothers at Braidwood. Fig Tree, which is, you know, that's, if anyone knows Wollongong well, it's like a three minute drive. And Sydney, and we've got others. Now, have I forgot one? Can anyone pick the one I forgot? No? Wollongong, of course. Now, you can see, that was at the start of the year. Now, last year, we used to have half face to face, they used to come in, and half would be online. It's been a real shift. It looks like a lot of them come, but that was the start of the year, but most of them don't even come in. So I've got, sometimes I've got five in the classroom and there's 40 online or 41 online. And you can also notice that Glenn doesn't like that room either. There's not enough screens for him. Okay, so changes as a student. I've got uh, Bryn and Pat, and I feel the way they learn has actually turned me into a facilitator rather than a teacher. I'm just sort of guiding them through their learning. And they've got a couple of things they're going to talk to. I just hope I do this right. Recording now. Okay, guys, we've got Pat and Bryn, both from Cooma. It's the first time we've actually done this course because we've been able to do it flexibly through online means and, uh, and group everyone together within the Institute. So, Pat, firstly, you're going to tell us why it works for you and what you enjoy about the course. Yeah, it works for me because it's three nights a week, but it's not set. I can catch up on weekends. I'll do it a bit later. I can go back and watch the recordings around footy training and I just had a kid. and So, that, yeah, that works really well. Okay. And, Brian, what about yourself? Why does it work for you? Oh, it works really well. I just can come home from work and not have to take days off work so I'm not losing any money or anything like that. And it's really flexible just being able to be at home, do all the work at home online, got any questions, shooting a message down and the guys are pretty quick. You're a star. Sort of uh, out. Okay, that's excellent. And what's some of the bad points? I've probably yeah. seen Brett's face three nights a week. <laughs> <laughs> really, is that it? <laughs> Good on you boys. Thanks a lot, yeah? No, right, thank you. They set me up for that, honestly. Okay, to continue, I've, I've noticed, since a lot of students are preferring to just stay at home now, I've noticed there's three types of students and I'm apologising for generalising and some of you teachers may agree. So this is online. This is what I think that they're like, or they're becoming like. You've got a great student, always engaged, always doing the work, always checking stuff. You can even like open up their assessment and you know they're going to pass. Do you know those type of students? Then you've got the quiet student. You're not sure if when they're online, they're sometimes engaged, they're sometimes they're not. Sometimes they surprise you, sometimes they disappoint you. Does anyone know the third type of student? The annoying one. Yeah? Anyone know the annoying student? They contact you at inappropriate times. They're never engaged. They're always handing in assessments at the wrong time. And, you know, I, I love them the bits. So I go out of my way to help them. But, you know, you, you spend a lot of time on these students. And now from that, this, the communication, like I do a lot of Moodle messaging, and some of the communication I found is like a big technological advancement. Does anyone know what it could be? No one? Mobile phone, eh? SMS. That's just the way the boys like to do it, okay? Uh, they all have... SMS is the best way, and the annoying student loves contacting you at the worst time. Keep in mind, as a facilitator, you are now on call 24-7 rather than 9 till 5. This is a, he's actually a really good student, but he's always contacting me at the worst time. So, as a facilitator... And I've given them my phone. They contact me any any time. Is it better? I'm not sure. You know, it's 24-7 to 9 to 5. I'm not sure. But you just got to make it work for yourself. And that is because these guys are carpenters and builders. They're pretty rough. And they will contact me on a Saturday night. So turn off your phone Saturday afternoon from 6 o'clock onwards. <laughs> okay, so changes as a, as a teacher. We really incorporate active learning. So... Last year we used to do it, uh, a topic, we used to do a subject, then a less, uh, an activity. But because everyone's in a broad area and all students are at different paces, we 
we do the whole of the learning content, so that might go for an hour or two hours, and then afterwards I say, okay, go do all the activities, and I just sit there and help them out. That sort of works better for us. I'm really big on active learning, especially with these students, and for the online factor as well. Okay, so Glenn is also going to have a chat of some of the changes in the last year. Here we go. I've noticed you've got two screens. Well, I've left one at home. <laughs> all right, quick question. Uh, what have we improved over the last year with regards to our online and face-to-face -face learning? I think the interactive learning has improved uh, humongously. The students themselves uh, are learning. They're, they're, they're learning off each other. The, the forums and the, the labels that they have, uh, the interaction within the students, uh, it's just been fantastic. Oh, that's it. That's great. You're a bloody legend. Thanks, Glenn. I'm indebted to Glenn, he's done so much work to help me out to get this going. So with some of those changes, uh, we've really focused, and it's good to see with um, this conference about pushing for learning analytics, because I've been trying to follow it and track a lot of the students. So, you know, we keep an eye on them through last time they've accessed the course. You know, this, this guy obviously is not doing a lot of work. <laughs> um, I've, I've really pushed with the progress bar, and can you notice, like, you look at that student, he's pretty much going to pass, isn't he? But if that red, and he's done that red, he's going to ring you up and contact you and hassle you till it gets fixed up. Now, it's either a glitch in the system or it's usually because I haven't updated or I haven't marked it properly. They are really big on it. So that's really good, the engagement for the students. And then also we have the grades, so I keep a good eye on them. We also, the activity reports, whenever I'm a bit worried about the quiet or annoying student, we check the activity reports and really follow that quite a bit. Also, even though we try to really help out the students, some get caught out, okay? So rather than research and learning or viewing, can you notice they get two attempts, how quickly they've done it? So he's been busted. So I, I saw that and I noticed, you know, we need to change. So I sent an email out to everyone saying, right, that's it. You got one attempt. And, and, and I'll get them to get about 80%. It's all open book. They should know. It's all about research and finding out stuff. So, and it seems to be working now, they're like, oh God, one attempt. And these are just the learning activities. Okay? So our Moodle advances. And we're still doing Moodle and Adobe Connect. Uh, it works for us. Um, if someone sends me an assignment through an email, I just reply, I said, just put it in Moodle, can you? I find it really hard to track and follow things through email, so I just go in, do it through Moodle. I'm actually a big fan. Okay, so some of the Moodle advances, we've got the old stuff and then we're bringing some new stuff that we just started doing. So we're still doing the forums quite a lot. At the start of a topic, I ask them, what do you know about this? To see what they do know. Uh, quizzes, I've always got like five or six quizzes per night, maybe five questions. And assessments or assignments, whether it's a class activity or an assessment. Some of the new things that we brought in, uh, construction software apps, like you can see Cordell's, they're big on estimating. So we're really incorporating those because that's what they use on site. So we try to use that as much as we can. And myself and Glenn, we actually use Camtasia and we're making a lot of videos. And at the end of it, we're putting probably three quiz, three question quiz. And we're putting that through as a SCORM package into Moodle. And it updates and puts the grades in for you. And that's a high level for me, but that my IT girl helped me with that. And you can see at the end, it's probably hard with the visual, but you can see the bottom was three minutes 14, hits that dot, then there's three questions. And they answer that. And I've been talking to Julian and he said, we might need to change to 90 seconds, which I'm sort of thinking is probably, you know, building carpentry teachers, their, their mindset won't last as long for three minutes anymore. Statistically, okay, so before we started to set it up in Moodle, it was a two year face to face course and we had 26 students. It's now, they had 12 complete over a two-year period, so, I don't know, do you call it 46% or 23% completion rate? Last year was about 50. We had about 42 complete, uh, I'd go through the year, the rest of them pulled out. We had 37 complete with a 74% completion rate. This year, we've got 85, and it's dropped down to about 75, just to personal and family commitments. But I've estimated there's going to be 65 course complete, so it was 77% completion, which is, you know, we're really proud of. And it's including, you know, the whole of the institute, where before they weren't even teaching it at Cooma, Maria and Goulburn. 
So very, very proud of that. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone knows, but the student flexibility often means a bigger workload for a teacher. You know, if they're doing stuff at any times, you've got to keep going back and forth and back and forth. But anyway, it is time consuming, but I, I love it. The future. So our future, uh, like with this conference, and I went to TAFE New South Wales conference uh, a couple of weeks ago, the big transformation I've noticed is from e-learning going to m-learning. So I've just, I've, I've, it's blown me away because I've been thinking about it and then now it's, it's sort of happening here at these conferences, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, and then the learning analytics, everyone's pushing for that. Personally, I want to improve my assessment feedback. So you imagine marking 85 students. You know, the first 10 year of feedback's great and the last 10 is like, good work. <laughs> You're just tired of it, aren't you? Uh, and then hopefully, you know, we've done the Institute wide, but TAFE 1 is trying to get everyone to come together. We might be able to go this course statewide. Thank you. Can I just, can I just get everyone a wave? wave a, I'm going to take a photo away and put this up on Facebook. <laughs> so could everyone just give us a wave? Thanks. Great, thanks there, Brett. Uh, has anyone got any questions for Brett? As uh, Peter, I'll come to you first. Thank you. Um, I've got a question in regards to your assessment. You obviously have online assessment, but what about the practical component if it's building? Is it yeah, okay. I probably should have said that. And last year, does anyone know the difference between a carpenter and a builder? A carpenter are the guys that stand the frames, pitch the roof. The builder actually does the admin and he runs the job. Okay. So most of this course is administration, contracts, yes. legal, the code. There is one set out, practical activity, and I, I went down to Cooma. There was no teacher that could assess them. I went down there and took a video. That's when I saw the guys when I took that okay. little video. Yep. Um, we do have one field day, yeah, but most of them come to the campus at the moment. We, we, have, we have one guy that didn't turn up and he said he's going to video it with his boss and his boss is going to sell it off that he can set out. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, were, any, were there any other questions? I think there was, I saw some other hands go up. Sorry? Oh, okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, well, I had one, actually, and that was, um, how do you find that the mixture of online learning and uh, bums on seats learning has changed the student dynamic? What do you mean, the student dynamic? Um, the way that the students interact with one another. Um, do they do, is there more of that, or has that oh, changed? Oh, yeah, well, I don't let them talk on the... Adobe Connect because it's too many students, but they do chat quite a lot, and the forums they're starting to interact a lot more than last year. I do find it hard to teach face to face, so you're walking over here and then you, I've got to talk to these guys as well. So it's quite a juggling act, and Adobe Connect. A lot of the people watch a recorded session. Sometimes I press pause, and then I'm blah 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 blah, and now later I've gone, God, I haven't put it back on again. You know, I forgot the recording. <laughs> But yeah, no, they're really interacting a lot better now yeah, than, than, say, just last year. And they don't like coming in. They're just sitting at home. I think they like their mum to make them dinner and they sit there. Because they're, <laughs> they're all, you know, from 18, the majority are 18 to 26-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, all the assessment is, sorry, all the assessment is um, in their own time open book. So you haven't got any supervised exams, yeah. let's the, say. Actually, I do have at the end of the year... Mm -hmm. uh, an open book assessment, which is like a, a, a test. I ask some general questions just to keep an eye on them. Yeah. A lot of the assessments, I didn't show it, I showed it last year, but they do video assessments. So I remember that actually. So yeah, that so for example, yeah. WHS, they have to um, um, look at a hazard and control that hazard. Yep. Instead of writing about it, they'll say, Brett, look, there's a hole. We're going to control this hazard by putting a handrail. And that's what they... That's what they need to do on site rather than writing. And all do you the time. use a particular um, method of them uploading to Moodle, or that's not how they? If they can, if it's too big, yep. they send me a link on drop in Dropbox. Dropbox, okay. Yeah, yep. yeah. That's that, that's the only way it's been working for us at the moment. Yeah, if it's too big. Uh, well, thank you very much, Brett. And uh, was there a question? No, no, no. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, and we'll give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.